G'day, thanks for watching. I've been studying to get my MED2 Marine Engineering Certification. This is an Australian qualification which allows me to be a chief engineer on a vessel with an inboard engine up to 750 kilowatts, which is quite big, um, or a chief engineer or second engineer on any vessel in Australia with outboard engines, along with numerous other things. A lot of larger commercial vessels must have a chief engineer aboard, so this is a very useful qualification to have. I decided to do this at South Metropolitan TAFE in Western Australia, located at Fremantle. The location is frankly fantastic. We got the Western Australian Maritime Museum right next door, submarine up on the slip. We have the Shipwreck Museum with the Batavia located inside. A lot of excellent facilities and Fremantle itself is full of beautiful historic buildings. You can't just become a chief engineer by doing the course. You also have to have your time up at sea. So you need the relevant experience on vessels, which I definitely have. If you're looking to do this, I'd strongly recommend that you do at least one major haul out before you come and do this course. So a big focus of the course is of course, marine diesel engines. A chief engineer needs to be able to understand how a marine diesel engine works, understand all the legal maintenance and safety issues, and know how to fix it when it has a problem. We got taken through the entire history of diesel engines, including all their origins, by checking out the steam engines in the steam museum. If we're about to hit a reef, you know, we can go from, from full ahead, we can go, we can go full of turn, and then we can go technology. The course has a lot of classroom time a lot of theory and a lot of mathematics. But of course, the bit that I'm really interested in is the workshop time. The workshop has an amazing collection of functional cutaways. So we can see exactly how the equipment works, where all the parts are, what can go wrong, and what we'd have to do to fix it or do maintenance on it. This is the Professor Alex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tell him about this, Alex. We've got a side cube. Oh yeah, push your rods and uh, rockers up the top of the bows. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I found this cutaway, functional cutaway, really useful for seeing how the valves work, how the push rods work, how the cams work, how the gears work, how the timing works. This heavy lump of steel is a cylinder head off of a green diesel engine. And as part of the course, we had to pull these apart and then fully rebuild them, grinding and reseeding the valves and then reassembling the thing, making sure everything's that the, the uh, all the bolts are torsioned correctly. Well, a bit that I wasn't really feeling all that confident coming into the course. I mean, I do a bit of uh, maintenance myself. I service my motorbike, I service my own car, but I was feeling pretty nervous. And I was surprised that uh, my actual base knowledge was actually quite good. The course included a lot of information about things other than diesel engines, including haul outs, build systems, pipes, seals, through hull valves, everything. To be a sailor, you need such a broad range of knowledge. You pretty much need to have a working understanding of everything. At the end of the day, You've got to be able to solve potentially life-threatening problems on vessels at sea on the fly. And the key to the whole thing is to understand how everything works. And that way troubleshooting is just simply a logical process of working through the problem one step at a time. The TAFE has a couple of vessels. So uh, we spent time going aboard them, did practical assessments and assignments, had to find all the various components, we had to do pre-start checks. Take the vessel out, do observations while it's under operation. Love this old Gardner engine. It's so quiet you can actually talk over the top of it. I've only spoken about a few of the aspects of the course. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive. However, a course is generally only the start of the learning process. I do feel like a grandpa here. Most of the students and even in their structure are sort of 
in their teens, 20s or 30s. So in summary, I found the course pretty easy. The academic side was way easier than the Master 24 meter, which I've done previously. The amount of learning is uh, a lot less. And uh, there is a fair bit of mathematics involved in the course, but not particularly, I didn't find them particularly hard. If you're not good at maths, you might not like it so much. Uh, a few of the guys on the course made the mistake of not studying enough. If you're gonna do the MED too, make sure you study the material and you know it. Uh, you need to if you want to pass the exam. I think I was the only person that got through the exam without any correction. And the reason for that is that I studied everything I've learned each night, making sure that I understood it and uh, memorizing the key facts. And also anything I didn't understand, I'd go back and ask a lot of questions about the next day. With regards to the price, the course is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've spent probably 20 to 30 thousand dollars on my marine training so far. That's including accommodation, travel to the locations, all the submissions and uh, everything else. Um, if you haven't done lots of courses before and if you're eligible, there are actually lots of government subsidies which can make it far cheaper. So now I'm a fully qualified commercial captain, Master 5, and also a fully qualified MED2, Chief Engineer. So I think I'm going to go have a little bit of a holiday and then see if I can find myself a job.